So, Tech Nights, Lodi here. Um, yeah, we got an interesting one for you today. We're doing a little bit of wiring um, for the infrared system. And while I'm in this unique position, I thought I might describe it with you. I'm being a little bit quieter because my um, supervisor is sleeping on the job. Aren't you? <laughs> Poor bandit. We're dog sitting at the moment. <laughs> so yes, that is Bandit. I think he's been in a video before. But yeah, he's supervising my um my wiring. Okay, so um we're inside the tank. Specifically, I am inside the driver's position and I am working on the hull junction box for the RBJ. Uh essentially what this does is it connects to the turret rotary base junction which is behind there look at my other videos i kind of explain a little bit of that um we're connecting up the power from the distribution infrared distribution box which is that gray box right in the back there where my finger is um yeah so i've fed the wires all the way around still got to tie the rest of them up there but they're gonna sit up there nicely i won't touch bandits in there at the moment um but yeah this cluster of wiring um is basically it's actually a lot simpler than, than it than it looks it's just a little convoluted because of the way that they design these things essentially every wire that comes in and from the bottom so all of these little Try and not block the light. Basically, all of these little yellow ones and little green ones at the bottom here, they've got a designation. Um, it'll be... Let me move the light. <laughs> so that one there is like RBJ20. And the next one is 21, 22, 23, etc, etc. Put this back. Um, yeah, those essentially have a corresponding uh, wire up in the turret which is sort of up around there but if you can imagine it in your head this is essentially like a wall socket so whatever you plug into here um, will transfer up into the turret now, most of the turret is already pre-wired um, from the factory, but the infrared system is more of a, mm, let's call it an add-on feature. <laughs> and so they use this. Uh, all of the centurions that I've seen, nothing plugs into here. So the top here is completely blank. These wires aren't connected at all. So what they've done is, and this is all in the wiring diagram too, I'll should have them. I feel paper. Uh, here's a section of it. So here's our RBJ. So that is over there. And we are working on the hull junction box. And the turret junction box is the one that is up around the corner that I was trying to show before. Um, but yeah, so these are basically your sockets. You plug in here, and you plug in here, and you've got continuity all the way around. Um, it looks very simple from here. It looks like it just goes boop, 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 boop. But in reality, it goes from here, and then it goes down, and then across, and then into the rotary base junction, and then it goes up, and then all the way around, and then into the turret, and then all the way around. To the back there so yeah there's a fair bit of um nonsense going on there but i have done continuity tests with that and i have confirmed that my 26 is continuous with my 26 and my 25 with my 25 24 23 all the way down to 18 so i've got continuity all the way through the next step is to connect our two major points these wires here, as they are so helpfully labelled, negative and positive, this one here, they are essentially the main power 
in for the infrared system. So the gunner's periscope, the commander's periscope, and the infrared light all get their power through these two cables here. And then they go up into the turret and they come out at the switch block. Um, yeah. The driver's periscope is actually these two wires here. And I've got to feed them around here. But we don't have the uh, driver's periscope, so those um, are just going to be neatly tucked out of the way. Uh, yeah. This little wire here, this little yellow one on the top, that goes to the metadyne. And to my knowledge, it is a switch. Um, which one are we talking about? This one here. This little wire. It's definitely not thick enough, as you can see. It's definitely not thick enough to carry any significant load, yet it goes to the metadyne, which um, basically, eh, in essence, the metadyne is basically a, um, uh, it's a quick changing DC generator. So it's able to change um, its voltage uh, current rather quickly. And that's used for the turret um, system. Uh, but considering there's only that tiny, tiny little yellow wire coming out of it, it's definitely not carrying, you know, a ton of load. Um, and it's only coming out of one of the, um, one of the wires, which I've got to do later. It's one of those ones in there. But essentially what that does in my mind, and again, this is all I really have to go off, is that it's just a switch wire. So it comes back to the distribution box, which is over there. Now the distribution box is actually powered through the mains. So through that panel over there, shine the light. That panel over there and that panel over there. Now that panel that the light is on right now with the blue little tags, that is the, essentially that is the mains and it's the changeover um, system for the generator and, sorry, the main engine generator and the auxiliary generator, which is powered by that unit there. Um, so when that powers up, it switches the mains over um, to run off that generator, not the big engine, uh, sorry, not the yeah, not the engine attached to the main, not the generator attached to the main engine. There we go, finally got that. Because that actually generates more um, than the uh, generator attached to the main engine. Um, because that needs to power essentially everything. So you've got them running at both times. But you can't have them both pumping current through there. Otherwise it'll just burn everything out. Because then essentially you're running two generators into one. So what I believe this metadyne uh, cable does is it switches over the charging for the distribution box, which is in front of it when it focuses. The distribution box in front of it. Um, yeah, because it has its own little set of batteries that need charging. That's the only thing that I can really think of that it would actually do, because it's certainly not being charged by the metadyne, by such a teeny tiny little cable. On that topic, the reason there's a bunch of these cables is, as I just explained, one of these is not enough to carry the current needed to power the infrared light and the commander's periscope and the gunner's periscope. It's just not enough. These are, these are a bit thicker. So it's about 24, yeah, 24 volts going through these two here. Um, but you can't just run one of these into one of these. I am using pretty um, thick wire here, just in case. But what we've done is I've actually connected one of these each to four of these, as it is described in the instructions. So you can see that they connect four, so 19, 20, 21, 22, into a single lead. Likewise with 23, 24, 25, and 26. The box that all of this came in um, didn't have these connectors. Um, 
this connector. I even looked for the part number, couldn't find them. So I had to make my own and that is what these are. Um, and I've used nice long bits of wire so I can make it nice and pretty and so I'm not kinking them out too, um, too hard. So they're just nice rolled over. And this way when it's all done, I'm of course going to cover these joints, but it will sit nice and flush in there. And then I can put the box over the top and that'll be one side. And essentially I'm just going to have to do the same uh, with the turret junction box, which is all the way up there. So yeah, that is, um, that is a fun little bit of wiring. But yeah, once all this is done, uh, we should be pretty good to go. I've been learning a lot about these infrared systems and interestingly enough, there seems to be a few different types um, fitted to, uh, even within the Australian Army, there's a fair few that were installed. They're all marked the same. For instance, uh, this one doesn't have it. That, there is another page, but I don't have it with me right now. Um, but essentially, they're all number one mark ones. Like uh, it says on this little one here, if I don't bump into Bandit. So number one mark one. The problem is uh, the wiring. I have actually found three different sets of wiring diagram. And most of them don't include this metadyne wire. Likewise, they don't include the wiring for the auxiliary panel, which is the one in the far, far corner. I don't know if you can see that. Over there, in the far, there it is. You can just see the edge of it. That's the auxiliary panel. Uh, this one here. The generating panel is that one. And that one is our main panel. And yeah, all the wires that I have I've got all of these wires, so this is the correct um, wiring sequence for the one that we have. However, I've been sent a fair few PDFs um, from guys who have actually served on these tanks, and they're different, which is understandable, but they are also labeled number one, mark one, uh, and the boxes look different. So, yeah, I might do a video on that once I've sort of gotten to the bottom of my understanding of why things are different. Oh, here's a good, interesting one to point out. So driver's periscope, which you just pop one of these ones out um, and switch it over. Uh, basically, all it is, uh, you bolt it into the storage bracket. Cable, I've got that um, upstairs. And then that cable, cable, cable LU819329-3, that's those ones right there. Now, on the other uh, wiring diagrams that I've seen, there's a switch block that goes there, which is actually that switch block there. That's not where it goes, that's just where I've put it for now, just so it's out of the way. It should actually go right here next to the choke lever. But on this wiring diagram, it is not included. Um, and I've got that cable too, the 4A-1. I've got that one as well. Um, so yeah, there's a fun little mystery for you. I've got the switch block, but the switch block isn't present on this one, which makes me think that the uh, distribution box on this model behaves more like a switch block. So yeah. All sorts of fun little adventures, but it's been really uh, interesting learning. And I think bandits learned a lot too, haven't you, boy? He's just gonna ignore me. No, oh, poor bandit. Now he's a good dog. Um, <laughs> he wanted so desperately to to come in. Every time I came in, he was barking and whining. Um, and now that he's in here, he's completely ignoring me and just relaxing. He was sleeping before. <laughs> but yeah, so um, there's a quick little, sorry, quick little explanation as to what this mess is. It's actually quite simple. So there we have it. Um, 
I've been having fun doing all this sort of stuff, getting bruises too. Like, got a groovy bruise right there and all my legs and stuff. So, but that's just part of working on tanks and having fun. So, um, yeah, ask questions, leave lots of comments if you have any idea as to why there are like three different wiring diagrams. Let me know. Um, it could also be the difference between British and Australian tanks. Who knows? Um, but this is working. I've already tested it and it works. So, okay. Enjoy the rest of your day. Leave a comment. Subscribe. It does groovy stuff with the algorithm. And I will see you in the future.